The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep, miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Definitely, we all have certain obligations, duties and responsibilities uh, to reach in our destination before reaching to, to our destination. It is the key essence of the poem Stopping by Woods on the Sunday evening by the poet Robert Frost. Namaste and good afternoon everybody. Uh, it's Mira Madhur Jishi, an English teacher of Kalika Secondary School. Obviously, students, you might have understood that, you, may, you might have guessed that what I'm going to teach you today. Yes, today I'm going to teach you some of the poems based, uh, based on the textbook of our class 10. Altogether in class 10, there are five poems. Out of those five poems, today I'll try my best how many poems can we deal with. Okay, out of those five poems, the first, today I'm going to deal with first poem, The Row Not Taken. The road not taken by Robert Frost. <coughs> Please slide. The road not taken by Robert Frost. First of all, while talking about the poet Robert Frost, he is an American poet. Uh, in his poem, mainly we can find that uh, he represents the rural life of general people. Uh, in his poem, he presents the natural things like woods and the pastoral life as well. In his poem, he brings some of the ideas, ideas from general life and he philosophizes them. In this poem also, uh, the language used by the poet, that is very simple. But at last or at the, at the, at last or at the end of the poem, he philosophizes the real meaning of the, of the poem. Uh, in this poem, um, in this poem as well as in other poem, he compares, his, compares our life uh, is a journey. Our life is a journey from birth to death and that begins from birth and it ends in death and during this life span we all human beings have to do different kinds of things different kinds of, different kinds of activities as well as we have so many options so many choices and at that time or at, at, at those point we have to select one of the best options out of many it is about the poem uh, it is about the poet Robert Frost. Okay. Now let's talk about. Uh, let's recite about this poem. The road not taken. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry, I could not travel both. And B. One traveler, long I stood and looked down on as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other at just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and the wanted where though as for that the passing deer had warned them really about the same. Had warned them about the really same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black Oh, I kept the first for another day. At knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling with this with a sigh, somewhere edges and edges hence, two roads diverge in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. It's okay. This is about the recitation of the poem, and now let's go some of the new words from this poem and their meaning in the context of this poem, please. Uh, 
uh, first word diverse it means branch away or separated or fork or junction wood forest bent tonic or curved undergrowth a mass of bushes of plants shrubs fair clear and beautiful claim demand grassy covered with grass where to be worked or to be damaged passing walking going one worked damaged bithri of where is called where is one lay fell step footprint leads guides or directs doubted suspected sai a deep and a long breath hence for this reason or from now less travel means worked by few people these are some of the words from this poem the road not taken now let's paraphrase about the poem two roads diverse in a yellow stairs yellow yellow wood and sorry i could not travel both in these two lines first of all yellow ro yellow wood refers to wood refers to forest yellow wood refers to the forest covered with yellow leaves when the leaves become old they turn into yellow color and at that time the poet was going through a road in the yellow wood or yellow forest while going through that road he reaches in such a point that from where two roads are divided with each other two roads are divided with each other and from that road he get confused whether to choose this road or choose that road and sorry i could not travel both obviously being a single traveler it is not possible to travel both the road at once at that time we have to choose only one road only one road and be one traveler for that for that long i stood it means he the poet he stands there for a long time it means to take to make a decision wisely uh, to take a right decision the poet stands there for a long time and look down as one as far as i could to where it bent into the in the undergrowth uh it means uh, in these two lines uh when the traveler could not travel both the road at road at once he uh first of all looks at one of the road out of these two roads in the last line of this stanza what happens he observes he observes about the first road the first road that it was uh, to some extent it was uh, straight but after some time it was bent in the undergrowth undergrowth means you know uh, shrubs or mass of bushes so that road is not so straight and so so straight and so clear he finds that uh now let's go to the next stanza stanza number 2 stanza 2 uh when the poet left the first road since it was bent under the under in, in into, into the undergrowth then the poet he took the other he he took the other road it just as fear it just as fear and having perhaps the better claim uh it means while choosing the second road or while describing about the second road uh, the poet selected the second road and he hopes that second road to be better because it was grassy here grassy refers to full with grass or means covered with grass it means when some people walk in any of the roads then we do not find any of the grass in that road but when people do not walk or few people walk in some of the roads obviously we find grass everywhere in the road so second road which the poet had selected it was full it was covered with grass it means few people have walked in that road and wanted where here where refers to to be walked to be damaged it means the road wants to be walked over it 
Though as for that the passing there had won them really about the same. Then, then after the poet begins to, the poet continues to go through that road. Uh, and after passing some distance of that road, he comes to realize that in that road also some of the people have worked. Where one is the B3 or third form, B, Bob third form of where I had won them really about the same. It is about the poem, it is about the that paraphrasing of the sec second stanza. Now, let us go in third stanza. And both that morning equally lay in lone, in leaves, no step had trodden black. Now let us talk about these two lines. Uh, the poet might be the first traveller to work, uh, to work in that forest. And in that morning, both in both the roads, leaves have fallen down equally. And in those leaves, we uh, that the poet did not find any of the footprints or any of the stems had trodden black, trodden means worked. Any of the leaves have not become black because no people have worked there. So, now let us uh, see there. Oh, I kept the first for another day at knowing how way leads to, leads on to way. I doubted if I should ever come back. Now, let us go to the fourth line. At knowing how way leads on to way, <coughs> the poet has known that the poet has known that obviously if he follow that road then obviously it goes further and further and uh, until and unless he reaches to a certain destination this road continues to follow or continues to go on that reality the poet has known that and if he went in that road if he continues to go in that road and the poet uh, it is not sure that whether he would be written back or not that reality the poet has known the fact the poet has known about that but the poet oh i kept the first for another day knowing that reality knowing that fact the poet has kept the another or the first road to travel at any other day it means it is the general human nature of human beings like the poet has now uh, I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere edges and edges hence, two roads diverge in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Now, uh, basically this stanza, fourth stanza, it mainly talks about uh, uh, the situation in future about the poet. Uh, he will be telling the, those whole experiences about his life uh, with a deep and long breath. Uh, whatever the activities, whatever the things he experienced uh, in his life from this time, from this time to uh, the ages and the years and the years coming in future. Those all things or those all experiences, experiences the poet will tell uh, from now with a long and a deep breath with his friends or with his relatives and what type of experiences would he tell uh, that the poet would tell such type of experience that two roads diverse in a wood and I I took the one less travel less travel means uh, worked by very worked by few people I took the one less travel by and that has made all the difference because of that selection of that uh, less travel road it brought so many changes and so many differences in the life of the poet. Obviously, uh, we all have such type of uh, choices in each and every situation. We all have such type of uh, choices and selections in each and every modes, each and every steps. And at that time, Obviously, we find difficult whether to choose this option or that option. It is one of the difficult matter. So, one of the theme of this poem is, you know, one of the theme of this poem is problem in 
making a choice each one of the theme of this poem. And at that time, in those uh, options, or in that uh, option, out of those options, we have to think very wisely and we have to make a right decision. If we are able to make a right decision in those right times, obviously it will bring so many changes, so many benefits and our life would be easy and uh, comfortable. But if we are not able to make a right decision, if we make any of the decision hurriedly, what happens? Our life would be full of sufferings and problems. Dear SE at attending students, it doesn't happen only in the case of every human beings, but it happens, you know, it happens in every human, everyone's, hum, everyone's life. And basically, after getting the certificate of SE in your hand, you would have so many options, not only two, like the poet has. You would have so many options, and out of those options, you have to select one of the best. And if you are not able to make a right decision, if you are not, make, um, if you are not able to select a right option, at that time, your life would be full of sufferings and problems. So you have to think very wisely in those matters. <coughs> This is, you know, this is the key message of the poem. Uh, the road not taken by Robert first. Okay, students, uh, some of the questions are here. Uh, uh, <coughs> in this, uh, in this uh, poem, uh, another theme of this poem is that dilemma means confusion. Confusion. Confusion also is one of the another theme of this poem. Uh, when the poet reaches in a diverse or in a junction or in a fork, at that time he is in dilemma, he is in confusion. Dilemma means confusion. Which of the road or which of the way to choose? That is also one of the very difficult matter. Dilemma is another important theme of this poem. Okay. Now, uh, for the students, you have to solve some of the questions. Some of the questions. Uh, answer the following questions. Uh, what does the fork? Fork means, you know, that diverged, means branched away, junction, provide to the speaker. Definitely, it provides options to the speaker. Why does the, why does he stop there for a long time? Why does he stop there? To make, to take a decision wisely, or to choose the road. Why does the speaker feel sorry? Why is the speaker in dilemma, means confusion? Why is, what is the central idea of the poem? Which road does the speaker choose to travel? Now, match the following. Match the following. Diverse, woods, undergrowth, claim, sigh, trodden, bend, hands, and with those other words, a deep and a long breath, worked on, branched away, forest, demand, shrubs, a mass of bushes, from now on, curved. Okay, dear students, you, you have to solve these questions. Uh, now, uh, we are going to learn another poem, uh, which, in, which is included in our textbook. The name of that poem is, I wonder I wandered lonely as a cloud, as a cloud. And this poem was written by William Wordsworth. William Wordsworth. This poem was written by William Wordsworth. <coughs> 
uh, while talking about the poet William Morshoth, uh, he is an English romantic poet. Uh, as well as he is the beginner or pioneer of romanticism, because uh, William Morshoth and S. T. Coleridge, they published uh, the lyrical ballads uh, in 1798. With the publication of that book, Lyrical Ballads, Romanticism began formally in English literature. So, he is called the beginner, uh, beginner of uh, Romanticism. And uh, while talking about uh, Romanticism, uh, Romantic poets, uh, William Worsworth, E. S. T. Coleridge, uh, P. B. Shelley, uh, Lord Byron, John Keir, so many poets are there. And out of those poets, uh, while talking about uh, William Wordsworth, he is uh, he is basically a nature poet. It means uh, he gives priority to nature. Nature is all in all, especially for all romantic writers. But basically for William Wordsworth, nature is all in all for them. They are the nature worshiper or nature lover. They find each and everything in the nature. They, li they, they like to enjoy in the nature. If there is no nature, they do not imagine their life in this world. Such type of qualities, you know, as well as imagination, subjectivity, and many more things can be found in this, uh, in that uh, found in, in his writing. And while talking or while connecting the relationship between nature and uh, feelings, that especially that r uh, romantic writers, as well as uh, William Morshoth, he mainly focuses on uh, imagination, imagination and emotions, imagination, emotions, uh, feelings, those are the qualities as well as subjective, subjectivity, those are the qualities William Morshoth mainly focus on. While connecting, uh, connecting the relationship between nature and uh, uh, emotions, he has defined poetry in such a way that poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings and uh, powerful feelings recollected in tranquility. This definition he has said uh, relating the nature and emotions. Okay. Uh, in this poem, I wander lonely as a cloud. The poet, uh, for the for the first time. When this poem was uh, first published by William Morshoth, was published by, by William Morshoth, it was named as I Wonder Lonely as a Cloud. But later on, its name has been changed and its name has been, or its title has been changed and it has become Daffodils. Daffodils. These days, these days, um, we can read this poem under the title Daffodils, not under the title I Wonder Lonely as a Cloud. Okay. Uh, uh, first of all, I want to recite about this poem. I wander lonely as a cloud that floats on high over valleys and hills when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the bridge. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretch in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in a sprightly dance. Dance. The waves beside them dance, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the soul to me had brought. Puff, when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in fancy moods, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude, and then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. Okay, this is the recitation of the poem. Now, <coughs> let's discuss some of the new words from this poem and their meaning in the context of this poem. 
wander. Wander means worked without any aims. Plots, drifts, moves slowly on water. Over means over. Bells, bellies. Crowd, a large number of something. Host, a great number. Many, group. Golden, of yellow color. Beneath, below. Fluttering, moving lightly and quickly. Bridge, light wind, slight wind is called bridge, sign to be bright, twinkle, sign is speckle, Milky Way, group of galaxies, stretched, extended, made wider, margin, border, bay, a broad inlet of the sea, glance, a short and a quick look, tossing, moving side to side or up and down, sprightly, sprightly full of joy, waves, tides, Uh, sparkling, shining, glee, happiness, gay, happy, jocund, cheerful, company, togetherness, gazed, look steadily or long look, oft, often, vacant, empty, pensive, thoughtful, serious, inward, inside, spiritual, bliss, extreme happiness, solitude, loneliness, privacy, and pleasure, joy. Okay. Now let's paraphrase about this poem, stanza by stanza. Paraphrasing of the poem. Uh, in the first stanza, the poet himself compares with the cloud. I wonder, wonder, I like a cloud. The poet was moving like a cloud, and he was moving there alone. No one was, no one was there. He was moving. Uh, alone there and that floors that means cloud that floors on high over bells and hills obviously cloud doesn't move under the ground it moves over the high over the valleys and hills like that cloud the poet was wandering the poet was moving and he doesn't have any you know, he doesn't have any kinds of goals any, any, any kinds of aims and intentions just he was moving over the valleys and the hills like the cloud. At that time, at that time, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, golden means yellow flower of golden, yellow, yellow colored golden, yellow colored golden daffodils. So many, so many daffodils were seen by the poet while moving in that way a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. And those daffodils, what were, th wh where were those daffodils? Those daffodils were beside the lake, beneath the trees. Where were the daffodils? Beside the lake, beneath the trees. And what were, these, what were those daffodils doing? Those daffodils were fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Breeze means slight, slight wind is called, or light wind is called breeze. The, those are the activities of the daffodils. Yeah. So, in this in this stanza, uh, that uh, what the, what did uh, what what does the poet compare with? The poet compares with the cloud. You know, why does he find the daffodils? He finds the daffodils in under the uh, beneath the trees beside the lake. And what were what were the daffodils, daffodils doing, they were fluttering and uh, dancing. Those activities are presented in the first stanza. Okay, now let's go in second stanza. Continuous as the stars that shine. Now in this stanza, the poet compares those daffodils with the stars. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way. Like the, like the stars twinkle in the Milky Way, those daffodils were uh, shining, they, those daffodils were twinkling. They stretch in never ending line. Those daffodils were, they were expanding, they were expanded in a never ending line along the margin of a bay. Margin means side of the bay, a broad inlet of the sea is called bay. 
along the margin of the bay, so many daffodils were expanded. Ten thousand saw I ate a glance. Glance means a short look. With that short look, the poet was able to see nearly about ten thousand daffodils in that short look. And those daffodils were tossing their heads, moving off and down, side to side, and in a sprightly dance, you know, in a, in a cheerful dance, they were dancing very happily and cheerfully. Such type of activities, uh, the, the activities of the daffodils, uh, situation of the daffodils are presented in this second stanza. Now, let us go in third stanza. Now, let us go in third, third stanza. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. Now, first of all, let us describe about these two lines. Uh, in these two lines, the poet uh, compares the dancing of two things, dancing, one, dancing of daffodils and the dancing of the waves. Although the dancing of the waves were sparkling and they were happy as well, but in comparison to the dancing of the dancing of the daffodils, the uh, dancing of the waves were outdid. It means in that competition, the dancing of the daffodils were far better than the dancing of the waves. Waves means the waves of water in the lake. A poet at that time, up to now, up to now, the poet has described about the uh, things in the nature or things in the nat things in the natural phenomena, like the mm, condition of the waves, dancing of the daffodils, position of the daffodils, yeah, activities of the daffodils. Those all things were described up to now, and at that time, after this, a poet could not be, could not but be gay in such a jacund company. Company means togetherness, jacund means happy and cheerful. In such a cheerful togetherness of natural beauty or natural things, or basically of daffodils, a poet could not do any things. Only he could be happy, except that he could not do no things, uh, could, not do, could not do any things. So, he gazed and gazed, but little thought. So, continuously he looked at the natural things or natural beauties or with the daffodils, but little thought, he got he little thought what wealth the soul to me had brought. And now the poet realizes that whatever the enjoyments, whatever the enjoyments and the happiness the poet has got looking at the natural beauty. He could not get those things, those happiness, those enjoyments from his uh, physical and uh, material property. That is, the, you know, that is the essence in this third line, third stanza. Now let us go to the fourth stanza. For oft, when on my cows lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. Uh, in this stanza, the poet mainly uh, recalls about his past. Now the poet is not in the nature anymore. He is not moving like a cloud anymore. Now he is in his in his own home. He is sitting in the sofa of his own home. Uh, and while uh, sitting in his own own home, and now his mind, his mentality is very thoughtful, serious, and his mind is empty. In back end or in pensive mood, he is lying or he is sitting in his own home or in the sofa of his own home. At that time, they flash, they refer to daffodils, they flash, they come upon that inward eye. Your inward eye, not those physical eyes. We have two physical eyes, but inward eye is only one and it cannot be seen. In that eye, those daffodils come or those, uh, those daffodils appear, which is the bliss, extreme happiness of solitude. 
Solitude means loneliness. At the time of loneliness, when those daffodils come into the inward eye of the poet, what happens? It provides him extreme happiness. And then my heart with pleasure fills when those daffodils come in his inward eye or in the spiritual eye or in the uh, inner eye. Then what happens? He becomes too much happiness at the time of solitude or at the time of loneliness. Then after his heart fills with pleasure, his heart begins to fill with, begins to fill with pleasure and dances with the daffodils. In this, okay, dances with the daffodils. Uh, in this stanza, mainly the poet he recalls, he recalls about the past activities. Those things which he saw in the nature, those things we, he captured in the nature, those things are recalled in this last stanza. Okay, uh, I have already told you that uh, the uh, that the poet William Wordsworth has defined uh, the poetry as uh, it is the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings recollected in tranquility. Uh, if you look at these all stanzas, you know, or that look at this poem from the beginning to the end, uh, do you find that elements of definition in this poem or not? Obviously, you can find. First of all, he enjoys in the nature, he moves, he roams in the nature, and after that, he thinks a bit seriously, he thinks a bit seriously about the nature and other things. And finally, when, she, when he sits in a tranquil mood or tranquil mentality, those things which he has captured in the nature, those things are reflected, those things are recalled in his mind and he begins to write the poetry. This is, you know, this is about the poem, uh, I wonder lonely as a cloud. Okay. And you have to solve some of the questions here. Uh, match the following words with their meanings. Uh, vacant, sprightly, coats, gates, sparkling, bay, stretched, gay, and in group B. Cheerful, extended, a broad inlet of the sea, to look steadily, so far, lively, empty, shining and flashing. Now, next variety of questions. Answer the following questions. Who is compared with the clouds? Who is compared with the clouds? The poet or the speaker is compared with a cloud. Where were the daffodils? Where were the daffodils? Find out the location of the daffodils. Under the, beneath the trees, beside the lake and beneath the trees. What are the daffodils compared with? What are the daffodils compared with? The daffodils are compared with the what? Stars. The daffodils are compared with the stars. Which company is referred in the poem? Which company? Uh, basically, the company of natural beauty. But here in this poem, the company of daffodils is referred in the poem. What does inward I mean? What does inward I mean? Inward I. Inward I means? What does inward I, I mean? Inward I means the spiritual I, not the physical I, not the physical eyes, but the spiritual I. And what does? The why does the poet dance? Why does the poet dance? 
Why does the poet dance? Because he dances, the poet dances, the poet dances. Why? Be dances? Because his heart is filled with pleasures. Okay. Uh, please, students, you have to solve these questions. As well as uh, you should try your best to find other so many questions. And you have to bring, uh, you have to raise some questions by different mediums. Uh, in this way, uh, this poem, uh, this poem, I wander lonely as a cloud, is mainly about, mainly about the recollection. It's mainly about the recollection of, rec mainly about the recollection of past or recollection of the uh, recollection of past and recollection of natural things. Uh, it is about the poem. I wandered lonely as a cloud. Okay, students. Today we mainly deal with two poems. Uh, the road not taken and daffodils. I think uh, you got uh, some of the ideas about these two poems. Okay. Uh, it's okay. Our time is getting over. So, uh, thanks all of you for watching this television, and special thanks goes to the technician as well as the entire family of Buddha Community Television. Thank you.